Hey guys, Erin here at Eat Move Rest and welcome back to our channel. So this has been a long awaited, much requested video. Today I'm going to be sharing with you guys my top seven breastfeeding tips and tools. <laughs> So I've got seven tricks up my sleeve and seven items that have really helped me along the way with my breastfeeding journey. So I am now 12 months postpartum, which means Max, as you guys know if you've been following, just turned one year old. So breastfeeding has been an incredible journey. It's something I never in my wildest imagination thought that I would do for as long as I have been. I plan on continuing through year this whole year and just kind of gauging where things are at by the time he hits two and just kind of seeing if I want to continue from there. But thus far, it has been the most rewarding experience for both Max and I. It's been such a rich bonding experience and I just have nothing but great things to say about it. That being said, breastfeeding has worked out tremendously for me and I know that is not the case for every new mom, which the struggle is real, honestly. It was, it was a little bit of a bumpy road getting started, but I'm gonna kind of jump into what has helped it to be such a rewarding experience for me and for Max. There is a lot to cover. I hope this doesn't get long-winded. Sometimes I can tend to talk too much. Hopefully this is really helpful and you can think of it kind of as like a video podcast. So prop your phone up, listen to it while you get ready in the morning, especially if you're new or expecting mom and you need some help getting going with things. This is gonna help you. It's the video that I wish I would have had to watch. So I would have been felt like I had more of a well-rounded knowledge base. So I really hope that's the same for you guys. Anyways, if you guys are into this video, if you wanna see more mommy and me videos, what I eat in a day, what Max eats in a day, you should give this video a thumbs up. That really helps our channel as well as hitting that subscribe button and turning on that bell. So you'll get notifications when we put out new videos on our channel. As always, leave me some love in the comments below and be sure to share your tips and tricks and tools with me because I'm not a lactation consultant. I'm not a physician or medical professional. This is just what has worked for me. Feel free to share, correct, or just encourage and start a conversation with other moms. So if you are a new or expecting mom, let me know a little bit about yourself, your baby, where you're at with your journey and what has really resonated with you. Let's just get right into it, you guys. Tip number one is to breastfeed on demand. And what that simply means is the more that you feed your baby when your baby is hungry, the more your body will produce. So. When I started out and Max was a newborn, I probably breastfed every one to two hours. And up until about six months, that was kind of our routine, at which point we introduced solids. So at six months when he started dabbling in solids, it took a while for it to actually build up to three meals a day and then snacks and all of that. But as your baby gets a little bit older, there are going to be longer gaps between breastfeeding times. So it got up to be, I would say, about every two to three hours, and now Max is at one year and even less. So I would say now he breastfeeds every three to four hours during the day. And honestly, you guys, it sounds crazy, but he is a power eater. So he will breastfeed for maybe two minutes max, pun intended. He will probably only eat for a couple minutes at a time when I feed him during the day. Part of that is because he's so active, so alert, so aware. Um, his vision is developed so he can kind of see things more clearly and all of that plays into him not wanting to sit still for very long. But that being said, sometimes I get a little anxious that he's not feeding enough to keep up my supply. So I do dream feeds. So dream feeds have been extremely helpful. Um, we do co-sleep, which makes it a lot easier. So I don't have to hop up out of bed and I haven't since day one. Um, we had a bassinet, but we just decided it was way too difficult and we felt a lot more safe and comfortable with Max sleeping between us in a co-sleeper. 
Um, so dream feeds are just breastfeeding when your baby is still asleep. So Max sleeps extremely hard and most babies do. So if you're lucky enough to have a really good sleeping baby, then I recommend doing dream feeds if you are choosing the co-sleeping path. I'm not saying you have to, but it worked great for us. So dream feeds, I would usually just roll over in bed and roll Max next to me, whatever side I'm on. I will just simply breastfeed and at night he feeds for a much longer period of time. So that kind of helps me to feel a little bit better like he's getting more of what he needs. So I would definitely recommend looking into dream feeds. Um, and on that note, they do say that breastfeeding is supposed to be the best form of birth control. So you shouldn't have to worry as much about getting pregnant while you're breastfeeding. That being said, everybody is different, but if you really want to help ensure that, stay on top of your feeding on demand. In my research and from what I found, it says that you should not go longer than six hours in between feedings if you want to keep the prolactin levels up which is going to keep you from ovulating keep you from having your periods which i still haven't had a period in over a year totally fine with that it's different for everybody some people do start cycling again sooner but if you want to ensure a little bit more that you're not going to ovulate then i would recommend not going more than six hours in between feedings okay moving on tip number two is hydration stay hydrated so you will find especially in the early days when your milk comes in that as soon as you start to breastfeed you will get extremely thirsty listen to your body in fact most of the time when you feel thirsty it means you've already waited too long to drink water so just stay hydrated throughout the night throughout the day just force feed yourself lots of water because your body is going to need hydration in order to continue producing adequate amounts of breast milk and on that note number three is calories make sure that you stay on top of eating i cannot even describe the amount of hunger that i felt when my milk came in so when Max was a fresh newborn and I was feeding him every hour or two hours, I was insanely hungry, you guys. I would have to run downstairs in the middle of the night, grab a handful of whatever, bananas, oranges, make some oatmeal, just keep things in the fridge that are easy to grab and go or have your hubby fix you something. Um, especially when you're a brand new mom, it's really difficult to make meals and take care of a brand new baby and breastfeed and you're gonna be tired and worn out, so just make sure you've got meals prepped or use a meal prep delivery service. We've mentioned those in previous videos, but I can't stress it enough. You have to stay on top of your calories. So for the body to produce adequate breast milk supply, it requires an extra five to 600 calories. Also, if you're worried about your postpartum body, breastfeeding is going to help zip you right back into shape in no time. Trust me, your body burns 500 to 600 calories just producing its own breast milk. So that being said, you will want to be consuming an extra five to 600 calories. Maybe that means you're just eating bigger meals in general, or maybe you're adding in a few snacks in between, but do not worry about it. Your body will bounce back if you're breastfeeding on demand and keep those calories coming. It's not the time to be in a caloric deficit. Number four is I'm addressing a fitness myth. So on the note of calories, I'm also going to say that after you give birth, you'll want to take your time getting back into a fitness routine. I was so paranoid when I was pregnant that it was gonna drive me nuts to be basically sedentary for a while while I was recovering from childbirth, but I actually found the opposite to be true. I loved the next 40 days, the six week period. It was so sacred to me. Breastfeeding, bonding, skin to skin, sitting, laying, relaxing, just loving on Mr. Max. It was incredible. I didn't feel any ounce of anxiety or stress around not being able to work out. I did start going for walks shortly after giving birth because the birth process was relatively effortless. I did do a natural birth, started walking. It was the dead of winter in December, so it did get a little chilly. So we would go out in our garage gym, bring Max out there and he would sleep in his bassinet stroller and I would walk on the treadmill. Sometimes I'd go up on incline, but still walking slowly. Um, but a lot of people had said after your six weeks when you got back into working out, which I did, I jumped back in after six weeks because I felt great. A lot of people say, doesn't your milk supply tank when you start working out? And no, absolutely not. So I went out and I ran on the bike path 
no drop in supply. I lifted heavy weights, no drop in supply. Hit workouts, YouTube videos, spin classes. I eventually got back into all of my old routine, my favorite workouts. Um, if you guys haven't watched my workout weekly workout routine video, check that out, I'll link it below. But I didn't notice any drop in supply. If you have found something opposite for you, or if you're worried about it, again, just go back to the calories. So if your body's already burning five to 600 producing milk, and then you're working out, it might mean that you have to bump up your caloric intake yet again, maybe another three to 400, maybe even 500. So that being said, if you guys really wanna know the honest truth, I am lean, I am mean. Some people say that I'm too scrawny. I don't even care because I feel fantastic. I used to consume around 2,500 calories, and now I consume 3,000 to 3,500 a day, depending on how hard I've worked out, how much I've breastfed, and honestly, just listening to my body. I don't let myself feel starved because I know that that's when the milk supply actually starts to tank. So don't worry so much about fitness. It's more about staying hydrated, staying fueled. Number five is pump. So if you want to increase your supply, I would suggest getting a breast pump. Everybody who is a breastfeeding mom should own one. So there are a couple different types. I have a handheld one that I used early on when my milk first came in, and then I have one that I now use daily. So let's look at those right now. So this is gonna turn into a little bit of an adult show and tell session because I've got a handful of things that have helped me so let's check these out. Okay, so this is my little show and tell for you guys, but let's just talk really quick about when your milk comes in. So before it comes in, you're only going to be producing colostrum, and this might start to come in before you even give birth. Mine did, I would notice TMI. I would notice in the shower that like yellow liquid would sometimes come out of my breasts. It's called liquid gold because it's very minute amounts of colostrum, which actually is like a mega powerhouse superfood for your baby. When your baby is brand new and newborn, the stomach is only about the size of a small marble, so it doesn't take very much to fill up that space in there, but the amount of milk that they require from there on out when your milk comes in starts to go up rapidly over the coming weeks. But at first it's just colostrum, and I asked my mom, how will I know when my milk comes in? How will I know? And she's like, oh, trust me, you'll know. And sure enough, I did, because a couple days later my milk came in and my double A cup breasts turned into something about like this. <laughs> so for the sake of me not having to be extremely graphic, I'm gonna show you guys how I use this handheld pump. So this is called the Haka, and this is something that when I took my breastfeeding class, which I recommend that you all find a local breastfeeding class if you're um, expecting, it helped so much, but they recommended getting a Haka, which is this handheld um, silicone pump, and it's been incredible. So this thing, it suctions down so it won't spill if you suction it onto the tabletop next to you. It's got this lid with this little breathable thing in it. So I'm gonna take it off. And this is really helpful when your milk first comes in, you're going to feel like when you have that let down sensation, which let me just say, when your milk lets down, you get kind of a burning, tingling, um, painful sensation, not like bad painful, but like you can tell, like both of your breasts will have like a little ting, <laughs> I guess you could say. Um, so your baby's breastfeeding on one side and the other side is gonna start dripping and leaking, right? Because you're, at least like me, I was really incredibly engorged when my milk first came in. So like I said, like big boobs. Um, until your body starts to figure out exactly how much milk your baby is taking. And then it'll start to stabilize and balance out, I would say about around three months it took me, till then where my breasts weren't incredibly engorged every feeding. So. Your milk lets down, your baby is um, nursing on this side, and then the other side, um, you wanna be able to catch that milk, right? So you squeeze this and you attach it to your breast and you can see how it kind of suctions in there and it's gonna catch all of that excess milk. So your baby's nursing on one side and you're holding this on the other side, catching that excess milk that you can then store for later on use. So just trust me, every little ounce of milk counts, especially if maybe you're having trouble producing. So this Haka has been an invaluable tool and super helpful, easy to travel with, cram in a purse, smash down, and then pop this lid on afterwards. But like if you're doing dream feeds in the middle of the night, um, 
yeah, this is just a super helpful tool that I used a lot early on. So I will link this below if you guys want to check it out and thank you to them for sponsoring this video. Next adult show and tell item is my day to day pump that I use. This is the Spectra and this one you plug it in and charge it. So these two cords, my dad always joked with me early on. He's like, you know, you have to get down on all fours when you pump like a cow. And I, that just drove me nuts that he said that. Not true. <laughs> so these connect into each tube and then you know early on whoopsie early on i would just sit there and twiddle my thumbs and i couldn't hold my phone i couldn't hold max couldn't do anything really and then dusty actually found this for me on amazon which most people are probably smart enough to have one of these i recommend that you get it so it's just like a little tube top that zips in the front and then the pump the milk catchers go into it like that. And so you can wear this little tube top and pop these puppies right into it so you can use your hands and go about your day. So normally I would recommend that you just pump first thing in the morning, maybe set this on the counter while you get ready in the bathroom, something like that could be helpful. Um, and with the pump, there's a lot of different settings. So I have showed in the past before what I use. So everybody's settings are gonna be slightly different, but what I do is you turn the power on and then right away hit this wave button and I have it set to cycle 70 and the vacuum strength is a five. And then I let that go for two minutes until, or it's usually about two minutes till my letdown happens. And then I switch it to cycle 54, vacuum of nine. You might wanna pump the brakes on the vacuum strength if you have a brand new newborn, but as your baby gets older, they will get more efficient um, at removing milk. So then you might want to bump up the strength on that, but everybody's is different. The most important thing is that you want to mimic what your baby's actual suction strength is. So kind of play around with the settings um, and see how it goes for you. But I usually pump earlier in the day and I like to pump for 15 minutes. So I'll do that first cycle for two minutes and then I'll go to the other one and I'll do a total of 15 minutes. And everybody's amount of milk that they pump is different. So early on when I was really engorged, I could probably fill both of these up easily. And then there's some days where honestly, maybe I'll get like one ounce and one ounce. Um, I would say on the regular, I usually get about maybe two or three ounces in each of these. So what I end up doing then is putting it in a freezer bag. So there'll be little breast, uh, breast milk freezer bags you can get, put it in the freezer and then hang on to it either for future use, which I haven't had to use it because Max is pretty much attached at the hip and he goes everywhere with us. But what I've ended up doing is actually donating it instead. So there's probably a lot more that can be said about pumping, but I will say that the most important thing is to pump either about 30 minutes after a feeding or at least 60 minutes before your next feeding, just to ensure number one, that you have something to pump after a feeding, or if you're doing it before a feeding, you want to have that longer window of time so that your baby can actually get adequate milk from your breast. So the most important thing is that you're feeding your baby. After that, pump, store it, and then you can save it to either thaw for future use if you're sending your kiddo to daycare or grandma and grandpa's, whatever the case may be, or storing it to um, save for donating. So because I had an overabundance of milk supply, I was stashing away a lot. And what ended up happening was I went through all of the steps to uh, donate to our local milk bank here. But then I actually heard that what they do is they take all of the mother's milk, pool it together, pasteurize it, and then distribute it out. So when you pasteurize it, it actually is going to reduce a lot of those um, benefits of the fresh whole breast milk. So a lot of people mentioned finding somebody that you know and trust that knows and trusts you locally in the community that has a baby or they can't produce milk or whatever the case may be. So to donate locally. And that's what I ended up doing. I found a local person actually who was a sister-in-law of a mother who passed away, unfortunately. And the mom was super holistic and natural and would have wanted breast milk for her baby. So 
they were reaching out to local donors, so I donated a bunch to them. And then we found a, a couple of good friends who had recently had a baby who um, she couldn't produce, so we've been donating to, donating to them. And it's been so awesome to be able to see this little baby just growing and thriving. And she said, your milk's the cream of the crop, he loves it. So it's been a really rewarding thing to be able to do. And I've always got that stash in the freezer just in case I would need it if I wanted my parents to watch Max for a few hours. But like I said, we've never been, he's never been out of our arms for m more than a couple of hours. So we haven't had to use it for him, but it's there. My number six tip is to look into consuming more Galactagogs. So Galactagogs definitely sounds intergalactic, but I'm not talking about a character from Star Trek. <laughs> what Galactagogs actually are, are they are foods or supplements or herbs that are said to help promote breast milk supply. So none of these things are evaluated by the FDA or proven to be true, but a lot of moms swear by certain foods to help boost their milk supply. So my number one is mother's milk tea. I absolutely love it. I will do one or two tea bags a day. I kind of go on and off with that. If you donate your milk to a milk bank, they will not want you to be drinking mother's milk tea because of the fenugreek, or maybe it's the fennel, I'm not sure. It's just that some babies um, can't tolerate it. That being said, mother's milk is fantastic for increasing your supply, and I like the taste of it. Also, I would say these are like my top Galactagog foods are oats, dates, flax, chia. So I try to consume a lot of those. Also yams or sweet potatoes are said to be good. Coincidentally, these are all amazing tasting foods and they're so easy to incorporate in so many recipes. A few that I have, there's one on this channel for lactation oats. That's a great one that has oatmeal, flax, and dates in it. Another one is on my blog. I actually have a muffin recipe that I don't really talk a whole lot about it being lactation friendly, but it's got all the right ingredients. That's a fantastic one. You can also put all of these ingredients into smoothies really easily. And actually a girl that I follow on Instagram that I've become friends with, Ivy Carnegie, has a fantastic lactation brownies recipe. So you cannot go wrong with those. They're all whole, whole food ingredients, so you don't have to worry too much about indulging. They are fantastic, and all of these really seem to work for me. I would say the one ingredient that seems to work the best is oats. So I usually do steel cut, but give those a try. You can Google search, find all kinds of different herbs, like I said, as well, that can help boost your supply. And finally, my number seven breastfeeding tip is to rest and stress less. So if you've tried everything else on the list and you still feel like your supply isn't where it ought to be, I would definitely try stressing less. That's a lot easier said than done, but I have noticed when I am extremely worked up, anxious, stressed out, busy bodied, um, not able to settle down, then I do see a small drop in my supply. But especially when you go to sit down and breastfeed with your baby, just make it a warm, comfortable, loving, peaceful environment. Sometimes even like a dim or dark room can help a lot, especially as your baby ages. And like I said, their uh, vision becomes clearer. They get a little bit more distracted. It can be really good if you just get into a rhythm or a routine, like if you have a rocking chair or, or something peaceful, a peaceful place to sit that's quiet and dim. That can really help. Um, it can also help with your letdown if you're having trouble with your letdown. Using breastfeeding as a time to bond and to kind of close your eyes, decompress, maybe do a little bit of a meditation and some breath work, and just envision the nourishment pouring down from God to the sun, into your head, into your body, and breastfeeding and nourishing your baby. So stress less and rest more. My top seven tools aren't gonna take quite as long as the top seven tips did, I promise. So number one is a boppy pillow. So it's a pillow that wraps around your waist. It's in storage up in our garage, but it's just a pillow that wraps around your waist. And especially when Max was super tiny, um, fresh newborn, it was much easier because then I didn't have to like scrunch and hold him up here with both arms. He was able to lay there and breastfeed comfortably on his side and it just helped to free up my arms and help me to be able to sit up better. So invest in a boppy or breastfeeding pillow of some sort or even if you just want to save money and use something like this. Two would be good breastfeeding bras. You can find daytime and nighttime ones. I did use a nighttime breastfeeding bra for a long time early on, but I don't need more. I don't really have a favorite brand. I'll show you the one that I 
I have a couple like this. I have like a skin colored, nude colored one and this. So what it does is it just unclips right here. So you can just pop one of those bad boys out at a time and you don't have to like pull it up. Um, so it's worked out great. It's not the most flattering. I don't love it, but it works great. It's super handy. So get some good breastfeeding bras and you'll also want some pads. So early on, again, if you're engorged, if you have an overabundance of supply, uh, those are well padded bras, but you can also put these. I have reusable ones. There are like disposables, but these are reusable. I found on Amazon. Um, so it's just a little pad that catches excess. Like I said, when your let down is flowing out, if you don't have your haka there to catch it, using something like that. Number three is a pump. So the Haka and then the Spectra, like I showed you guys already. Number four is a baby bottle. So fun fact, Max never took a bottle, never took a pacifier. He's been a left hand thumb sucker since the day we brought him home. It's so funny because people will be like, oh cute, he started sucking his thumb. I'm like, he started really early on, like the day we brought him home. It was hilarious and it's so cute. And I was a thumb sucker too, but it's a great way for your baby to self-soothe. I wouldn't worry about making them stop until they're about three or four. So finding a bottle that works for you and that your baby will actually take is crucial. So especially, like I said, if you are going to head back to work and send your kiddo to daycare, you wanna make sure that whoever's watching your baby will be able to give them a bottle. In comes the Nano Baby. So this thing has been super helpful because it actually looks like a breast. So that's the only bottle we were ever able to get Max to take. And honestly, like I said, he's only ever breastfed. We've never really bottle fed a whole lot other than just like for fun. Sometimes Dusty wanted to give it a try. So he would feed Max in between my nursing sessions. So the Nano Baby was super helpful. I can link it below as well as I will link our Amazon store with all kinds of mom and baby products that we have used and loved. And also be sure to check out our favorite products video. We have a favorite baby products video. I can link that below as well. So just two more tools for you guys, nipple butter. So this is Earth Mama organic nipple butter and especially early on, they are going to be raw and sore, so invest in some of this and just slather those puppies after every single feeding. So I don't use it anymore because, you know, your body adjusts and adapts, but invest in some of that for sure. Have one for your baby bag and keep one by your nightstand. And the final tool is the most invaluable tool there is, and that is a lactation consultant. So either at the birth center where you give birth or the hospital, or maybe there is a separate location. We actually have a place here called Milkworks that has a handful of lactation consultants that you can go there and pick up breastfeeding bras, all kinds of supply, and you can go in with your baby. I would suggest doing it within the first couple of weeks that your baby is born. We first met with a lactation consultant in the hospital after I gave birth, and then a few days or maybe about a week after I gave birth, I went into Milkworks and met with a lactation consultant completely free of charge. They end up doing a weighed feeding so they can see how much your baby is taking in, how many ounces, and they kind of help you with latch. So making sure that your baby is able to latch effectively is huge. Otherwise, it can really affect your milk supply. So I would say that's the most invaluable tip trick tool in the book is to meet with an expert, someone who knows what they're talking about and what they're doing, but find a lactation consultant and call them on the phone, meet with them in person as much as you need to, use that resource and they will help you so, so much. That's about all I have for you guys. Let's get a conversation rolling with other new and expecting mothers and just kind of share your stories, your struggles, what has worked, all right, you guys, so hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Like I said, if you haven't already, join us here at the Eat, Move, Rest headquarters. Join the fam by hitting that subscribe button. Click that bell to make sure that you get notifications whenever we put out new content here. Leave me some love in the comments below. And like I said, let's get the ball rolling and start a conversation with other new and expectant mamas. Let's share our tips, tricks, and tools, what has worked, what we're struggling with. Let's just get to know each other here and make it a safe space to communicate and grow together. So until next time, eat, move, rest your best, and can't wait for the next video to see you guys again. Bye, guys. <laughs>
You bark like a pup? What sound does Bo make? <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs>